is going on YouTube? Welcome to my home. So this is the living room. This house was built in 1915 and it, we are still totally in the middle of renovations right now. The side table, the chair and the coffee table are hand-me-downs from my grandmother. The couch was on Amazon. Got a nice new 65 inch flat panel TV. The one thing that I will not scrimp on is entertainment. The entryway over here was a popcorn ceiling with yellow walls. And the previous owner left this mirror in the bedroom and this table was in the kitchen. So I just cleaned this off and I moved it in here into the entryway and I made this a legitimate, beautiful entryway. We are in the middle of renovations, so all of the stuff that you're about to see is only halfway finished, if that. And that's just what it is. Over here is the guest room. And it's very, very simple. It's an eight by 11 and a half foot room. The bed was purchased new, but the mattress was not. This was a hand-me-down from my grandmother table and the lamp. Now the lamp has a really funny story. Before my grandmother passed away, she, I hated her lamps. They are ugly. I would tell her all the time, I hate your lamps, grandma. Your lamps are hideous. And she would always say, I'm leaving you all my lamps in my will. And I would say, no, 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 don't leave me all your lamps, grandma. I don't want your lamps. And then she passed away. And now every house I've ever lived in has a dedicated room with one of her hideous, ugly lamps. So she won the argument there. <laughs> and then this is, this was my great grandmother's, then my grandmother's, then my mother's, and now it's mine. So it's fourth generation, 1951, I believe this was made. It holds my tools. <laughs> and then over here we have the closet. This is the guest room closet. Um, this and this, I'm waiting for my brother to pick up. This is empty. This is one of my grandma's hideous lamps that he wants, but um, these won't be here soon. But I did redo the closet. It was also yellow with popcorn ceilings. And I, I'm a minimalist, so I don't really have a whole lot of stuff. So I've got my blankets, um, Christmas presents, and yes, it's like nowhere near Christmas, but I've got Christmas presents up there. You know, you have to keep seven years of taxes and then a printer and paper, and that's about it. And uh, we did refinish our all of the doors, so I wanted to keep the original doors. I have to make some final adjustments on it, but I was able to fortunately save the hardware, thank goodness. Really, really hard to find parts for that stuff. And the dining area, so I actually made a video about this on my YouTube. The dining area had the popcorn ceilings, yellow walls, really, really dark wood. The wood was actually darker than this wood tabletop. So I stained it all down, sanded it down, stained it, uh, got rid of that, painted it white, went with the sage green, repaired the ceiling, installed the light fixture myself, and um, it really, really brightened up the room. This is the original cabinets from 1950 with all of its glory and all its imperfections, including cracked glass that I wanna keep it that way. Um, and the only thing that I kept the same was the top right here. And everything else is painted new. The chairs are a hand-me-down from a friend of mine. I actually love that she left them outside and they got nice and weathered. And that's the way I like them. Very solid chairs, table from Amazon. And then my bedroom. So this was an add-on to the house at some point. So we're actually standing in what used to be outside but I have a very minimalist design. Um, I like things really simple. This is Rocky's bed as signified by his picture. This picture was made by a really, really great artist, an old friend of mine. The lamp is a hand-me-down. The side table is a hand-me-down. And as you can see, I like to keep it simple. If you take a look at my closet, these are my clothes. So I've got my robe. These are my pajama pants, pajama shirts, my shirts, pants, and then that is my underoos. 
And then I've just got two towels. It's just a one bedroom or one bathroom house. So I don't need that many towels. And then change of sheets and my slippers that I forget the name of. And this is my closet with all of my stuff. So these are my winter shirts. As you can tell, I really, really like plaid. And those are my winter shoes up top. And then over on the right side is all my jackets. And half of this space is actually wetsuits and life vests. I live right on the river and I go to the ocean a lot. So better safe than sorry. So and then I've just got the two blankets up top and my vacuum. And then moving on over to the kitchen. So this is where we get into the renovations. This week I have a contractor coming in who is going to be doing the drywall and flooring. And then I'm going to refinish the cabinets, but, uh, and I'm going to do that all new. But this needed a major foundation repair. And I paid for this house in cash in California and all of the repairs are paid in cash. So it's been a really slow process because of the big repairs, but uh, it's really coming along and I have a vision. When you buy a house, never buy a house based on what it looks like now, based on, buy it based on what it can be. So it's going to be awesome. That's what it is. Then just over here is the laundry room. I will be upgrading the water heater and this is a 17 year old water heater. Upgrading the water heater will save me 83.33 a month over the next 15 years. That's going to be invested and it's gonna turn into about $35,000 just by upgrading my water heater. Go on. Okay. So uh, when I moved into this house, the backyard was mostly dirt and weeds. Pretty much any cement that you see out here was covered in weeds. You could not see it at all. And then there was like one patch of grass over here, but uh, I put down some seed, got it back to where it's going to be. We have a little tiny garden of zucchini over here, and I just planted some onions. This is a pear tree, a double pear tree. So it grows two kinds of pears in one tree. I actually just noticed this. There's some pears coming in right here. I'm super excited. That's awesome. This was a twig when I bought it. And it's Asian pear and cumis on this tree. Over here, we've got a triple apple tree. Again, it's been grafted so that it, it will grow three different varieties. This one's red delicious, yellow delicious, and my favorite, honey crisp. Yes, honey crisp. And then back here in the corner, I've got some artichoke growing. And the great thing about artichoke is that it self propagates. So every year there's going to be more artichoke plants. So I'm eventually going to have this whole thing just all artichoked out, but we've got some really, really beautiful ones coming in right here. And this one plant has just three already coming in and I just planted these a couple months ago. So over here is one of my many e-bikes. I love e-bikes. I'm not a, I do drive, but I'm not a big driver. And this one has the trailer for the dogs. So I can take my dogs. Also, it holds up to 80 pounds so I can bring my groceries, just lock it up when I'm shopping. And then I come back, no gas, no car registration, no insurance required. Here is my beautiful, perfect condition, 1998, 25 year old Toyota Camry in gold. It's my dream car. Some people want Porsches and Lambos. Uh, seriously, a 98 Toyota Camry is my dream car. It's got tinted windows, so it stays nice and cool. It is in perfect mint condition. So I don't do debt. I don't, I don't really know anything about it. And it's funny, even last time I did try to get a mortgage, I didn't qualify. So uh, that was a couple years ago, three years ago. So I don't even bother anymore anyways. And how did I do it? So a few years ago, before lockdown, I moved to Arizona and then we were shut down for three years. But during that three years was the time that my YouTube income went from about $2,000 a month, which was fine, uh, up to 10 or $15,000 a month, which was insane. I'd never seen that type of income in my life. And I've always lived the same way, no matter 
um, how much money I make. So I just kept living my life and I just took all that extra money and applied it to this house. And I had, I, I fortunately found a realtor that was able to find something in my low price range, fixer upper in the area that I was looking for. So that it just seemed like the next logical step to do that. My debt free journey. I started the charity. I read Dave Ramsey's book. I don't remember which book it, it was, but I do remember the first time I gave away 10%. I had like no money. It was awful. And I was like this, but you, I had to surrender, right? You have to surrender in order to get out of debt. Like what I've been doing isn't working. This guy knows what he's doing. So I'm just going to do what he does. He told me, tells me to do. I'm not going to ask any questions. He started, he said, he said, give away 10%. I was like, 10%, you know, I only make like $2,000. You're asking me to give away 200. That is insane. And I did it and I was like, fine, rah, 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 you know, all angry about it. And a couple years, it took me a year and a half to get out of debt. And then a couple years passed and they sent me this letter in one of the places that I donated to, they sent me this letter and it had a picture of the dog before and after. I give to animal charities and it was him before and he looked like he was on death he was on death's door and then there was like a a little tiny picture of him during surgery and then an after of how ha and he's just you know bright big ears tongue sticking out happy dog and um and it was it said like this happened because of you and then i was like wow okay that's crazy and um i i decided that because, again, because I live such a frugal lifestyle that I wanted to give like 30% of what I make. Um, and I started doing that and, and also all of my book sales. So I wrote a book, all of the book sales go into a charity account and that charity account is, you know, along with my giving and different things like that, it's up to $300,000. And if I, if I die in 20 years, you know, uh, stock market doubles every 10 years. So if I die in 20 years, it's going to be $1.2 million. And then that's if I put nothing else in it, but because I put all of my Amazon book sales in it, it's still around a thousand a month. So I put a thousand dollars a month into that account. It's probably going to be worth $2 million at least, at least. Um, I'm hoping four million, five million by the time I pass away, and I want to leave um, a legacy of giving. I, I want to not only die with dignity, but I want to give it all away and just turn into dust when I'm gone. And maybe, maybe they'll put like. I, I just hope that it saves thousands of dogs and animals' lives. Dogs are my spirit animal, so. Um, if you know most people use money for themselves i don't want to use it for myself i i i have no i have everything i could possibly want so it's time to give back i do buy almost very very as seldomly as possible i'll buy things that will depreciate in value that can be anything in pretty much everything that you buy depreciates in value and people always talk about cars depreciating value no it's everything that you buy. So if you buy a set of plates for $30, the next day you won't be able to sell it for $30. If you buy a TV for $500, the next day you're, you're going to get maybe $50 for it. So every single thing you, die, you buy is a depreciating asset. Um, so, and, and I feel like I already have everything that I want and I need. And it's very, very rare that I really buy any tangible item. Um, I prefer to spend my money on good food that I cook here at home or small trips in my local area. But, and plus I, I don't like things. So I don't like clutter. My mother was a hoarder. Um, my ex was a hoarder. So I want it to be so basic and minimal and simplistic that it echoes in my house. And because my house is so small, I spend more time outside. <laughs> For starters, 
never smoke or do drugs and keep drinking to twice a month or less. All of those things are the most expensive things that you can spend money on. If possible, try not to ever get a credit card. When you go to college, if you go to college, 94% of people do not work in the line of diplomas that they earned for their learning. So they get jobs that are not associated with their diplomas. So reconsider college, maybe go to a trade school. And if you go pay in cash, pay as you go. Uh, if you buy a car, do not ever, ever, ever buy a new car. That is the biggest waste of money you'll ever have in your lifetime. Buy something old, in good condition, keep it in good condition as long as you possibly can. Stay with your parents as long as you can, pay them rent, save up every single penny for three years, get two jobs, save up every penny for two or three years, and you'll be able to pay for a house in cash.